All right, it is the next day, and uh, this handle has dried up. Let's see what she looks like. I think it should be pretty good. And uh, yeah, that hole's fairly free and clear in there, so we'll take it out of the clamps, and then I'll kind of show you the little setup I use for heating up the tang of the knife, and then we're gonna stab it in here. And again, when we do this, it's important that we reference the back right there, and then we can uh, you know, make sure the blade is oriented correctly. So we can stick it in there, burn that hole out. Once that's done, then we'll go ahead and start shaping up the handle. Now this part gets a little bit stinky. All I'm gonna do is I've got my, uh, my knife right here, and I got my torch right here, so I'm gonna heat up the tang a little bit. Just kind of stick it in. You see already, we got a nice little, it's going in the very top there, so that's cool. Uh, we should almost maybe clean this face up first. That way we can actually get it down fully. I'm gonna do that real quick. We're gonna to jump to the old uh, belt grinder and just clean up that face. All right, so we've got our handle in the soft jaws of the vise. Get our knife and our little torch. Stinky process doesn't smell that great when you're doing this, but it works well. Still nice and cool right here. Always check it. You don't want to, don't want everyone to get the situation where you're getting. It's a little warm right there, obviously, but still nice and cool here. So let's do it again. Pretty much there. Beauty. We've got it fitting nice and snug there. Looks really good, nice and clean. That's ready to glue up. There we go. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna true this up. We're just gonna grind it flash, essentially make it a big rectangle. But before I true this down, I wanna make sure, this is important, I guess you can figure out later. Just, it's one of these steps that if you do it every time and get in the habit of doing it, it'll save yourself a lot of headache. I've got this all marked, this is the back. So I'm gonna go to the bottom, because we're not touching the bottom right now, and I'm gonna put a B right here. So now even after I grind the sides, I'll still know that this is the back of the knife. So I can go ahead and take all these marks off. It's not gonna affect my quick and easy fit up and when I'm checking things out. So I always, uh, always like to remember to do that. So let's go ahead and start grinding. All right, so we've got our block all squared up. We put the blade in here and now's where we need to basically line up the handle to the blade. Now, in looking down, I don't know if you'll be able to notice this on camera or not, but it isn't perfectly in line with the stock of the handle. So what I'm gonna do here is I'll take a one, two, three block and uh, we'll set the blade on here. And now essentially we've got the straight line, this datum of the line of the blade itself. And what I can do is just kind of transfer marks, and I'm not actually doing any measuring. I'm just trying to establish which areas need to have material removed. So if I bring it over to this side so you can see it. I've just got a height gauge here. This is an El Cheapo version. I, uh, I taped a pencil to it, and it's a pretty slick little issue. It works well for this. So what I'll do is kind of come up to this end here, set it roughly right about at the edge, and then go down this way and see, okay, you know what? This end is a little bit lower than this end, so that tells me that it's sitting like this a bit. So I'm gonna to need to take some material off of this side. So what I'll do is I'll bring it up to here, get a decent mark, I'll kind of lock this in, and very gently just kind of drag it along here. And essentially I'm just giving myself a grind line. So when I look at that, okay, good. So I see if I were to grind the material along that line, this side would be perfectly trued up to the blade. But I wanna know what the relationship is as far as how the blade is centered as well. So 
if I flip it over, I can just quickly tell. So look at, we're actually very, very close here. And if I go ahead and grind this, but now I'm running into an issue. Actually, you know what? This side is pretty much perfect. Um, I'm gonna actually go down a little bit lower because I'm almost on top of the block at this end. And I'm still just touching it on this end. So I'm gonna drop this down just a touch. Make sure that when I get over here to my low point, I'm still making a mark. And then I'm gonna put a line on here like this. And again, we're not really trying to do a lot of shaping or we're not putting any angles in. I'm not sure if it'll show up. So you've got the slightest little mark on the top edge there. And now we can flip back over to this side and we should be a little bit lower. So when I go over to here and mark it, I'm gonna end up putting a line in below the line we've just done. But now we're gonna have the same thickness on each side. And now I can transfer that to this side of the handle. And this one is actually not that bad. This, you know, it's not gonna take a lot of grinding to get this thing trued up nicely. Um, and put a line right here. And so long as I leave my height of this pencil exactly the same, basically I'm gonna get perfectly square lines that are in line with the, the blade. So we flip it over here. If we take a look, hopefully this shows up on camera. But you can see we've got a little more material to remove off of this side. And then we kind of need to take more off of this end. So right now our handle's a little bit skewed this way and by removing material, we'll straighten it out. Gonna take a little bit extra material off of this side, then this side, and then actually, you know what? On this side as well, we've got extra here than here. So that obviously tells us too that our block isn't necessarily squared to our blade. And that's the other nice thing when you're using this setup with a surface plate, we got a one, two, three block in this, is that, you know, we're, we're chewing it up and we're also squaring it up at the same time. And when I kind of look at it, I can tell that this block is kind of skewed this way. So by going ahead and going uh, more off of this side than this side, and when I'm grinding, I'm gonna be kind of looking down the blade here, down the handle, and I'm actually gonna make sure that I'm grinding to this line as well as to this line. So I'm not just gonna work from one side, I'm actually gonna be referencing both sides when I'm grinding. And then we'll be able to true this block up, uh, true this side up. Obviously, once that's done, we're going to want to true up uh, as far as square on this plane, the, the front and the back. But we can do that later doing a different way. What I'll do is I'll usually set this on here like this. And then I'll put a one, two, three block right here. But we don't want to worry about that right now because obviously we need these lines here. If we start grinding on here, we're going to lose our reference line. So we'll go ahead and we'll grind this thing up, true it up, and then we'll worry about these parts. All right, so we got this handle nicely squared up, and do you hear a noise out there? I apologize, I was filming here and I heard some noise on the deck, and it's actually my son whacking away at a stick with a knife, and uh, I didn't want to interrupt him, so I just let him go. We can just put up a little bit of a noise. Hey, if you got kids using knives, and learning to use knives, and whacking stuff with knives, it's a good thing, contrary to popular belief. Anyways, back to the task at hand. What we're going to do now, same thing, but we're gonna lay out some lines for the taper. Now, this isn't a massive block of wood here. Ideally, I think I might have liked a slightly bigger one. We're at just, we're about an inch and a sixteenth, or for my metric inclined friends. You know, just because we're in Canada doesn't mean we love the metric system. Um, we're about 29. Uh, millimeters and then as far as the width goes we're like 23 millimeters or let's say seven eighths of an inch um, that's a little bit kind of on the small side so we're not gonna get too crazy with the taper that's gonna go in this but let's uh, let's kind of take a look and see what we can do again get this thing jammed in there as best we can oh this edge has been ground to about right now i think we're at 11 thousandths of an inch so even grabbing it like this it kind of kind of makes you panic for a minute minute it feels a little 
little sharp, even though it really isn't. So again, there we go. All right, so what we wanna do is, we don't have a lot of extra meat on the spine end, so we're not gonna do much grinding there. You can see we've got a little bit more here at the choil area. So all I'm really gonna do is kinda of set this up here, and again, use my one, two, three blocks so I can keep it all square, copacetic. And I just wanna kinda of reference where we're at as far as the material. So I'm gonna kinda of bring this down here, uh, set this on top of the choil area, lock it in place, and then might go a little bit above. Actually, that's probably good. Now I'm just gonna make a mark right here, and then on the other side, and that's gonna be our visual. That's gonna be where we grind to. I actually might even do one right here just so I can verify that we're not gonna run into the tang area. And now that we've got that marked out, what I will do is basically just kind of draw a line from here to here, and that's gonna be the little bit of taper that we're gonna get. This isn't gonna be a massively tapered handle. So now we'll go ahead and grind this down. So we will have a slightly tapered handle. And again, this will be kind of nice because the top's gonna be flat and level. The bottom is gonna kind of taper out as you get to the end, which I always like. I always kind of like it to swell as it gets to the end of the handle. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and grind that in. Okay, so we've got it ground to that line. It's very, very, very subtle, but there is a taper in here. We've got this back part totally straight, which is nice because it lines up. For me, the hardest part of this was how big to make that handle. Um, I don't know if it should have been maybe a little longer. At the same time, I mean, you know, portions are one thing, but anything with a cleaver is gonna, there's never gonna be a nice balanced portion to it. <laughs> I mean, you know, as far as balance of the knife, uh, we're definitely not ideal however you know depending on how this thing's used it's not gonna be too bad actually so what I want to do now is what I had kind of alluded to previously and that is going to be getting the taper put in this way so what I'm gonna do basically it's it's the exact same little steps little processes over and over again is all we're really doing here so I'm gonna kind of pick a spot here that I want to taper to Let's say like right there, it looks pretty good to me. You can always add, we can always grind away more. And so I'm just gonna mark it out on both sides. Right there. Flip it over. Again, I'm always pressing down right here to make sure that my datum is always resting. You don't ever wanna start marking stuff out. If it was, or if I was pressing on the bevels, you see how that changes there? So always make sure that you're holding that down when you're doing your layout. All these little things, it's essentially just trying to be as consistent as possible. So there we've got that marked in. We might want a little more taper than that. It might actually be okay. So we are gonna be at this tip, we're gonna be five eighths of an inch, which I think is probably pretty good. Um, we're gonna go with that for now, see what it looks like. So I'll just do what I did last time. Take this, mark out my lines, and then grind to those lines. That'll be a nice taper. It'll definitely be noticeable, and I think it's gonna feel really good too. I'll tell you the straight edge, like a, <clears throat> a metal ruler like this, is one of the most valuable tools, as far as layout goes, in my shop. I use this thing every single day, and <laughs> there'll be the odd times when the kids will come in and borrow it, take it downstairs to the basement, and they'll be using it to make airplanes or something, and I'm like, I, I cannot work without one of these. They're cheap enough, and it's just something that I constantly am uh, relying on. So, with this marked out, exact same process, grind it down. Not gonna film it, because there's no sense showing 
Okay, so we've gone ahead and we've tapered this. You can see it's a very distinct taper in there. What I wanna do now is I wanna knock these edges off and put some 45 degrees on there. So to do that, very simply, a uh, way to mark some of these little features in. And a lot of this stuff, when you're laying stuff out, I mean, it's not precise, but you want consistency. Um, granite surface plate, again, with a ruler, one, two, three blocks. These are things I use all the time. I use this for marking out my, you know, the where I want the edge ground into. Um, um, it's just phenomenal how much these simple precision measuring tools uh, I use, but I don't use them for precise, just repeatability. Uh, even this thing here, I mean, this wasn't, this isn't overly precise, but literally I'm just taping a pencil to it and I just want consistent marks from, you know, different sides of the knife. So the way that I like to do about this, and this is kind of arbitrary, uh, but I'm just going to lay this block down on my service plate. I'll take a little pencil and I lay it down, make sure I'm on a flat so that I'm consistent. And then I'm just going to kind of mark some lines in here. And these are also going to be marked right here. So just mark, 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 mark. And then we'll do this side. So mark that, mark that, mark that, and mark that. Now, if I wanted to have the exact same uh, 45 all along here, I could just take this and mark the entire length. But since this thing tapers towards the end, it kind of gets fatter, uh, towards the butt of the handle. I also want the, the 45 degrees, I want that to taper as well. And it just kind of has a better look overall. So what I'm going to do is the same thing. I'm just gonna draw some lines in there, but just to very quickly and repeatedly get a different mark, um, I'm just gonna set my pencil on top of this ruler. Again, reference it, keep it flat, and then we're gonna make a mark right here. Again, we're gonna do this mark all along the bottom. And these marks on the top of the bottom are very good visual references for when you're grinding. So I would not skip this step. This to me is one of the, the more important parts. And then uh, all these ones on the side. Again, we're just making a mark that we're gonna connect these two marks with the ruler. And there we go. So now I can draw a line from this point right here to this point right here. There we go. Ready for a grind. Uh, actually, before I do that, I'm going to put this in the vise and very accurately lay out these lines here as well as uh, connect these lines here. And those are the big ones. You think about when you're grinding, you know, you can look at that line. You can kind of see what's happening on either side here and here. And it just, you know, this view right here is the money view for you guys. Um, you know, when I'm working on this, it's like, look down here, line up your platen with that. And then you can just kind of see what's going on the whole way down. And it works pretty good. And I also like, I do like the taper that we have. So basically, these 45s are gonna be tapered as well as this line right here, this flat facet, is going to get wider as it gets towards the butt too. So it's gonna look really, really good all together. I think I'm gonna be really happy with this. And it's all thanks to just taking the time to lay out some simple lines. So we've got those facets ground in and the way I like to finish them all is by hand. Again, granite surface plate, this is 400 grit. We will actually work our way up to 2000 grit to get a really nice finish on these. And it's pretty much a matter of just feeling where that facet is and uh, no back and forth. It doesn't take a whole lot. What we're trying to do ultimately is just get that surface completely even. And one way you can kind of tell where you're at with it is when you look down, every one of these lines should be perfectly straight. If you see any waves in there, you know you've got some discrepancies in the surface of that particular facet that's kind of moving around. So you want to be able to look down your handles and see perfectly straight lines on each one of these. That's how you know you've got everything really nice and flat and true. And uh, this is a really quick way. It takes a little bit of practice to get used to holding that angle. But I find when I was starting, I just kind of stop and just do like a push stroke. And then once you get the, the feel of that, then you could start going back and forth. I'm not coming up to this thing and going back and forth like crazy. I'm being very, very careful to maintain that exact angle the whole time. And uh, it really, really makes a difference. You just look down the end of these things and they just look fantastic. So I'm going to do this, get this whole thing sanded up and uh, that's pretty much how you finish these out. Obviously I'm going to need to, I'll just very lightly uh, hit this edge right here on the grinder. Usually I'll go up to like an 800 grit and just kind of go around it very carefully, as well as the bottom, we'll clean that up. 
and then I'll sand that down once everything's glued up. I always like to leave my back indication on as long as I can. Get this brought up to 2000 grit and then we'll glue it all together. All right, so we finished up the blade, cleaned it up, etched it, put my mark on there, and then we did the little, little tiny grooves in there just to help bite with the epoxy. Got our handle all finished up. I soaked it in some oil and I've just got some plastic wrap on it to keep it clean while I finish working on it. Took everything up to 2000 grit, except for the very back. I like to do that at the very, very end. I still see my B marked on there, so I know exactly how it's gonna go in. And we are ready to mix up the epoxy and uh, get this thing pressed in. Now, one thing I'm gonna use for uh, clamping it all together is one of these big honking clamps. Um, put the bottom in there. I did a test fit. I wasn't sure if it would clamp properly because I'm gonna be pushing here and the handle's gonna be over here. I'm not, I'm kind of, you know, out of line with it, but it works just great. Get a nice tight fit up in there. So we'll go ahead and mix up the epoxy and then we'll put it together, clamp it in, and I'll kind of show you that little setup. And hopefully it all goes well. And, uh, you know, in about an hour, we'll pull it out and the knife will be ready to sharpen. Stick in our clamp and then wipe off all of our squeeze out. All right, now let that dry. All right, it's been drying for a couple of hours now. Pretty happy with that. Let's unwrap this all and see what she looks like. All right, so we've got it sharpened up. We did it on the, uh, I did it on my bell grinder with a little sharpening apparatus I have together. Works really, really quick, really nice. And uh, just kind of put a little oil on the blade. And let's reveal the handle. That's ultimately what this video is about. And there we have it. Really nicely lined up with the blade. Got those nice crispy facets on there. And I think it's gonna be quite comfortable. Um, you can see the taper in there. Sorry, the light isn't all that great right now, but um, I think this is gonna be a really, really great little knife. Big knife, I suppose. Piece of telephone book paper. Just like nothing. That's how it's supposed to cut. And there we have it. Ready to get this thing listed up on the old website. Nice little choil in there, nice and smooth and comfy for your hands. All in all, I'm really happy with the way this one turned out. And uh, yeah. Well, there you have it guys. The main purpose for this video is just to kind of show you how I'm finishing up my wall handles now. I think in a certain sense there's they might be a little bit more work than a traditional like full tang handle, but at the same time, it's really, really nice to be able to shape the handle and do all the work to it without worrying about the blade. And to me, I personally, I just love the look of the wall handles myself, but I really like the fact that uh, before when I first started out, I mean, I had to, like I glued this in here and I did all the shaping and stuff with the blade in, and that was nerve wracking, it was precarious. I have ended up like scratching a blade on the belt grinder while shaping the handle. And so this system, and, and huge thank you again to Noah Vauchon for showing me that clamp method. So nice, pull it out when the epoxy is just about to set up and you can do all your work. And then once it's all done, I even had it coated with oil. You can epoxy it in there and boom, you've got yourself a beautifully handled blade. I hope you enjoyed this video guys. Again, links for uh, Noah Vauchon's Instagram. And thank you again, Noah, for all that you share on Instagram. You're welcome, Jeremy. Uh, it's great to have this community where we can learn from each other. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. And as always, I thank you so much for watching. Cheers. Cheers.